Hey, welcome to QBRI. This is Quantum Biology Research Institute. My name is Dr. Kieran Johnson. I'm a quantum biologist, and I'm going to talk to you about the Hebeck singularity, or a helium Bose Einstein condensate, as a singularity before the start of time. Sit back, relax, and strap in your seatbelts because this is time travel. This is the Hebeck singularity. The geometry of the sphere of liquid helium before the beginning of time. Now there are a number of special parameters associated with the Hebeck singularity that are associated with the formation of the universe as we know it. We have a diameter of C squared or 8.98755e to the plus 16 meters, which is twice the distance of the speed of light, hence the diameter being c squared and the radius being c. The electron positron pairing within the Hebeck singularity means there's 16 fundamental particles and they have a distance apart of 4e to the negative 14 meters. Each fundamental particle has a diameter of 4e to the negative 18 of a meter. 10,000 difference between that. Um, after 13.8 billion years, you get a inward trajectory at the square root speed of the velocity of the outward direction. Okay, so the particles are getting closer and closer together and they end up after 13.8 billion years at the Planck length, Planck length distance of 1.6e to the negative 35 of a meter. And that's a difference from the start to the end of 4e to the negative 22 meters. So we can understand what one side has moved inward, the inward direction by the square root of 4e to the negative 22, which gives you 2e to the negative 11 meters. So this model gives a mirrored symmetry type um, approach to looking at the singularity before the beginning of time. If we look at the, uh, the square root speed of the outward velocity as an inward velocity, and we multiply that with the length of time, we end up with 2.38503e to the 22 meters traveled over that period of time and there's a relationship between the inward journey and the outward journey um, and that enables one to consider the formation of pi squared and so that's really a velocity difference between the initial velocity and then the speed of light and there's a decrease in the speed by 9.97 times corresponding to the uh, the feature of pi. So pi squared equals around 9.97. It is a fundamental constant of nature due to the velocity difference between V and C, or the emission of alpha particles from the helium Bose-Einstein condensate and the resulting decrease in the decay of the speed over time corresponding to the formation of pi. And that pi is associated with the inward trajectory from four different points leading to four pi and associated with epsilon naught and mu naught. So the model one over c squared equals mu naught e naught or epsilon naught provides the mirrored symmetry balance to the helium bose einstein condensate with a diameter c squared the beauty of the, i guess the beauty of this model is that it provides an understanding of where the planck length originates from h as a fundamental constant of nature it identifies pi and pi squared as a way of the forming of positron electron pairs through the 
decrease of the velocity of the initial alpha particle emission, which was 9.97 times faster than the speed of light. So the model has some very interesting uh, parameters with respect to understanding the 1e to the negative 120 uh, quantum field energy corresponding to the balance of mirrored symmetry between the inward trajectory down to 1.6e to the negative 35 of a meter and the mirrored symmetry outward trajectory of 6.25e to the 34 meters and when we compare those two we get a number of e to the 69 divided by the initial diameter of uh, or the radius of the helium bose einstein condensate of c we end up with around 1.31 e to the 60 um, and so that is in a sense half the uh, fundamental background radiation level of 1e to the negative 160. So there's an inverted symmetry associated with that. Um, so we both have an outward and an inward trajectory from the initial uh, beginning of the helium bose einstein condensate in the Hebeck supersymmetry inversion model. And this provides a way of understanding how we can perceive the start of the universe through a specific geometry where every action has an equal and opposite reaction and by maintaining that balance point of zero we can get a transformation happening where dark matter is genera generated on the inward trajectory and dark energy is generated on the outward trajectory so we have a gravitational inward flow and an alpha particle dark energy based outward flow and the inward flow is developing a singularity after 13.8 billion years that's separated by the Planck length and that corresponds to the dark matter particle. So from the beginning we can understand a new geometry of supersymmetry inversion that allows one to understand both the external and the internal relationship within the sphere and how the balance of opposites maintains stability of the zero state enabling transitions to occur and separation of 75% out 25% in as the initial dark energy dark matter combination that originated from the helium bose einstein condensate. If we look further into the mirrored symmetry of the singularity, where one over c squared equals epsilon naught times mu naught, and the Hebeck singularity has a diameter of c squared, and by rearranging Einstein's equation E equals mc squared to c squared equals e divided by m, the Hebeck singularity provides a contextual framework for E divided by M being the right hand rule of electromagnetism. So E and M are at 90 degrees to one another, the interaction between the electric field and the magnetic field. So in this rearranged equation of C squared equals E divided by M, we actually have the geometry of electromagnetism. M is magnetism, not mass when it's inverted through this model. And what that suggests is that the S orbital structures contain photons of light as rings. And so the two ends of a piece of string have really been uh, attached to one another to form the S orbital structure. This is a lens in effect where a photon of light has created a sphere. And what we have here is three different models. One um, is the S orbital models of hydrogen. 
um, that is looking at the Lyman, the Barma, and the Passion lines from the n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3 layers of hydrogen. We have a model for a royal jelly protein isolated from Manuka honey that has been imaged by a nanosite microscope on the far right. That image is really atomic S orbitals and it is a quantum property of single atom physics operating in the hexagon aromatic ring of a phenolic compound that's bound to the royal jelly proteins. The sunlight image is, in a sense, the singularity within the structure of an atom. So the nucleus itself with the event horizon of 1 over c squared. And the model on the left is plotting the rearrangement of Einstein's equation c squared equals e divided by m onto a mathematical cross where e plus and e minus are on the y-axis, m plus, m minus are on the x-axis, and c and negative c are coming out of the singularity, uh, the point within the center of the atom. So in the case of hydrogen where we have three quarks and a electron the quarks in a proton are up down up and we can understand that up in the sussy inversion model was negative one and down is plus one so when we multiply negative one by one by negative one we end up with plus one for the proton and with the electron being negative one plus one and negative one gives an overall zero charge so hydrogen is a stable mono atom in terms of its quark and its electron and if you look at the calculations by adding the quarks well you've got two negative quarks plus one positive quark and you've got a negative electron so overall hydrogen would have an overall charge of negative two but it really comes down to the geometry of the inverted model that allows the quantum entanglement between the electron and the quark. So they are both negatively charged, but with multiplication, the negative becomes the positive, and the inner quarks within the gluon field neutralize one another, and you have a quark that's negative that surrounds that as a sphere at 2e to the negative 9, where the electron and positron pair within the quark field are 4e to the negative 18. And the electron that's in the orbital layer is external to the hadron, which is the neutron or the proton that's housed within the nucleus of the atom. So when we're dealing with single atoms, we are dealing with a different rearrangement. We don't really have the same geometry as we do with diatomic systems like an oxygen with O2 or a hydrogen with an H2. In the Sussy inversion model, what we have to have is really the balance of opposites in order to maintain the zero state of the atom to give it its stability. Dark matter is currently unknown. Uh, in the supersymmetry inversion model, it's postulated that because the Hebic singularity has an inversion system or the traje tra trajectory inward toward the singularity at the square root speed of the alpha particle emission, so at a speed of 54.686 meters per second, we get a distance corresponding to a, um, a singularity of 1.6 e to the negative 35 of a meter when we consider that inward trajectory after 13.8 billion years. And if you convert that into seconds, that's 4.3549 e to the plus 17 seconds multiplied by 
54686, and that's giving us a, a number, uh, 2.38158 plus, or e to the plus 22, and we can see that, you know, we have this kind of inward flow of light from this Hebeck singularity starting point down to the Planck scale. Um, and if you look at the numbers and do the calculations, you can see understanding of gravity is 6.67 e to the negative 11 meters cubed per kilogram to the negative one, the seconds to the negative two. Uh, the numbers that are kind of identified by this inward trajectory model correspond to numbers very similar to gravity. Okay, so we have a, a distance between the original uh, distance apart of the particles in the Hebeck singularity of 4e to the negative 14 of a meter, and they're traveling down to 4e to the negative, no, 1.6e to the negative 35 of a meter, and the difference between those two are 4e to the negative 22 of a meter. So the multiplication of the, the number of tamed based by the, the speed at which that inward trajectory is occurring versus the number of seconds in the universe multiplied by that kind of uh, original starting position and the finished position giving the 4e to the negative 22 of a meter, we end up having a number that is 6.24e to the negative 11. And that looks very, very similar to gravity uh, as a number. So 93.43% of g um, is predicted by this inward trajectory at a velocity at the square root of the alpha particles being emitted as dark energy. So here we have a dark matter particle formation system that takes four particles out of the 16 in the original helium Bose-Einstein condensate. So 12 have gone out in the helium like alpha particle and four go in. Um, <clears throat> and that's the whole point of the supersymmetry inversion model. The rearrangement of quark charge calculations to give charge parity is that it gave the numbers that correlate to dark energy 75%, dark matter 25%, and that with three and one ratio at the beginning of time. And we can understand the decay processes that are occurring and how that correlates to what we know now as the composition of the universe uh, as 68% dark energy. 27% dark matter and 5% matter. So dark energy and dark matter are generating matter in their decay processes. And we've kind of had a look and understood the flaws in the standard model of physics are based on the inability to see positrons within the neutron, the asymmetry caused by the measurement of atoms at the LHC, so the idea is really, well, we don't have to measure. We have got a model now that identifies what dark energy and dark matter are. We understand the velocity of dark energy and dark matter based on a mirrored symmetry or a, a balance of opposites, where the outward trajectory and inward trajectory have to be equal to one another. Otherwise, energy is going to be formed uh, or created and if we want to follow the first law of thermodynamics, where energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but only transformed, here we have a transformation of the original Hebeck singularity into dark energy and dark matter. And from that perspective, uh, we haven't created anything or lost anything. We've created a transformational process and understood that this potentially aligns with cosmology and also atomic physics, really just by looking at functional processes that maintain a zero state.